I do occasionally root for a better game. Like I, I, I mean, when you were watching Green Bay and San Francisco, and I was just sitting there thinking, is Rodgers going to lose another one of these home favored games? I was like, man, Green Bay's out of the playoffs. Is that good for football? What did you make of that game, by the way? Now we're five days removed from it. What did you make of that meltdown by Green Bay? I just felt like they gave the game away like everybody watching is. Now, offensively, they didn't do much. Defensively, when your defense gives up zero points, you should win the game. That's right. But this is what Aaron Rodgers has a problem with. When the game gets tight, he really only trusts Devontae Adams. He throws that deep post route to Adams when the deep crosser is coming open. But he didn't trust anybody else but Devontae. And so that's his gripe with the organization is go get me somebody that I feel like I can trust and go to in those moments. Special teams lost a game. You get a block field goal. You block a punt. You have 10 guys on the field in the last play of the game. You're probably not going to block the field goal, but at least give me 11 guys. But it was disappointing because for two years in a row, you're the number one seed. You get knocked out in the first game. You know, I, I will say this. As I watched the Rams beat um, – the Buccaneers, and I, I did think they were the much better team. I thought, you know, they got a little tight. But I, I am kind of – one of the things that's kind of shocking, I am surprised how good Vaughn Miller is because he didn't do much in Denver. And I'm watching that, and I'm like, I'm surprised that OBJ has quickly ascended. I'm surprised that Vaughn Miller – and part of me thinks I'm underestimating culture. I'm underest like Stafford. I didn't think it was going to be this much of a difference. I thought he was better, obviously. But it's like there's something to be said. You, you take – I mean, you know, you went from the Bengals to the Ravens. It's like culture is really important. The Rams keep making all these big moves. They all work. And it tells me it's got something to do with, obviously, the coach, but the culture. Your thoughts on that? It matters. And, and when I say it matters, it, it's the way the coaches conduct themselves around you, the way they treat you, the way they communicate with you. That matters. You may not have a say, but they make you think you have a say. And everybody in this situation is a grown man. Like I specifically think about the Ravens. Harbaugh is a special teams coach, and me and him would talk. What did I think about the game plan? What did I like? What I disliked? And whether he was listening to me or not, he made me feel like he was listening to me. Sure. And I, I guarantee I wasn't the only player he did that with. And so – Winning organizations and coaches that can relate to players. And it's that simple. McVay, he can relate to players. That pass a Cooper Cup call, you hear him say, for the love of the game route. That's Eric Yarber, the receiver coach. He used to tell us that in college. You're not getting the ball, but you're going to clear it out for your buddy. We're going to call this for the love of the game route. Well, that came into, <laughs> oh, this is going to win the game route when you see it's cover zero and Cooper Cup got open. Just little stuff like that. The culture that the coaches create with players, we can uh, communicate. It makes things so much easier, and it makes you want to be there and have fun and play. You know, we, I was Peter King and I were talking about this earlier, and we both kind of agree on this, is that Tom is very intense, and he loves structure, Tom Brady. He loves structure. And I, th I think of you as a guy that's structured. Uh, you're organized, your family, your business. You, you crave structure. And some people are just, you've had teammates. Chad Otosinko. They're a little loose. They're a little fun. They're not into structure, not into the details. And Brady, New England and Brady, even though he left, it was a hell of a fit for 20 years. Tampa and Bruce Arians, it's a little looser ship. And I think it played fine early. But I did, when you start listening to some of his comments this year about lack of focus and everybody's got to take care of their job, he's kind of sending these subtle signals out that it was like, I miss some of the New England structure. Go to your career. Did you ever get frustrated as somebody who's a fairly, you know, you're a guy that's a detail guy. You memorize the playbook. You're talking to coaches. Did you get frustrated with cultures, coaches, or players that weren't as intense and focused as you? I'll, I'll give you a story really quick. Take your time. We played the, we're playing the Steelers on a Sunday night, and we had a player on the team. They didn't show up to the Saturday night meeting. He was just sitting in his whole, he was sitting in the room. He didn't want to come to the meeting. Coaches went and got him. He comes to the meeting, kicks his feet up, and just kind of lays down. Long story short, they send him home. We sit in that meeting room, myself, Carson, the offensive coordinator, and the other receivers. Okay, this is what we're going to do. This is the adjustment we're going to make, blah, 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 blah. 
we get up the next day and it's Sunday night. That player's back. He's been sent home to Cincinnati. He's back now in Pittsburgh because they want him to play. And whoever they is, I, I don't want it. And, and so just little stuff like that. And you're like, on another team, that's not happening. They sent this behind back to Cincinnati. He's staying in Cincinnati. He goes back to Cincinnati and comes back to Pittsburgh. Short flight. And on other teams, that's just not going to happen. Tom Brady had it a certain way in New England. And some of those ways you don't like, and you get away that first year, and you're like, oh, this is very refreshing. But then things start to set, and you're like, ah, I wish it was. You want it to be in between because you didn't like what you had, but you really like what's going on in Tampa. You want that in between, and it's hard for him. Yeah, no, I, I can sense it with him. Um, what, what, you know, it's interesting. I I've never felt Aaron Rodgers was a perfect fit in green Bay. He, he looks like a Los Angeles quarterback. He's an LA guy. He's got Hollywood friends. And I've always been, it's, you know, Favre, small town guy from Mississippi far felt a little like green Bay hunt, fish, Wisconsin golf. You know, it kind of felt like Aaron's never felt like a Packer. He's made it work, but it's a, I've always thought it's a weird fit. And uh, I mean, Eli Manning never felt like a New Yorker, but he made it fit and he made it work. So it can work. It doesn't have to be perfect. But, you know, uh, I really do feel like Aaron, I've seen the Green Bay story. It's topped out. Let's try something new. You tell me what a professional athlete is thinking about when you've had success, you've got some money. I think Aaron in Denver, I don't think he cares where Mahomes plays. I just think part of Aaron is... I want something new. I want something new. And I like, I get that. Your gut feeling, is he a Packer, a Bronco? What, what do you think he's going through right now? I almost feel it's 100% he's going to the Denver Broncos. When you see Hackett get hired as the head coach, you can, oh, man, he interviewed well. Uh, he walked in there, and they were blown away. You know what they were blown away with? If I get this job, this is where Aaron <laughs> Rodgers wants to be. He's got to be here. That, that sold him. Because he knows the ins and outs of that agreement that was made between Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. He knows what's going on. And so he relayed what him and Aaron Rodgers have discussed in that meeting. And he became the man after that. Oh, we can get Aaron Rodgers if we hire him. This is what we're going to do. And so I believe it's a foregone conclusion that Aaron Rodgers will be a Denver Bronco because of things that Hackett was privy to that he told the Broncos. All right, finally, Chiefs, Bengals, who you got? I'm, I may be picking with my heart over my head, but I'm going with the Bengals. I go back to the first game, Colin. The Chiefs scored three points in the second half, and they did a good job shutting the Bengals' run game down. That's because they had eight in the box, eight in the box. Jamar Chase, man to man. What are you going to do now? Are you going to... Now play a too high shell and give them the run? Or are you going to do something similar? I believe a smart coach will change. And if you change, that run game will open up. Four weeks ago, they beat the Chiefs. They have a ton of confidence. That means a lot. Arrowhead Stadium and where the Seattle Seahawks play are by far and away the loudest outdoor stadiums that I've ever played in in my life. That's going to present a problem. Don't turn the ball over with. That offensive line concerns me a ton. But they just did this four weeks ago, man. The Bengals is going in the arrowhead, and they coming out with a dub. Okay. Niners, Rams, SoFi Stadium, crowd's probably 50-50. Who you got? Colin, the San Francisco 49ers started in 1990, beat the Rams 17 consecutive times. 1999, the Rams finally broke that 17-game win streak. They won a Super Bowl. Since then, they haven't lost more than six games in a row to the Niners. Well, it's six games now. The Rams will win the game and go on to win the Super Bowl. How about that? Hey, L.A.'s nothing but winners, baby. We're all for it. <laughs> yeah. Man, maybe not the Lakers this year. T.J. Hushmanzada, good seeing you, bud. I appreciate it. You guys keep up the great work. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.